Hi guys, welcome to a new series of tutorial on Spring MVC. In this tutorial series, we will start with the Spring MVC and we will talk about its components and wherever required, we will also go over to the core technologies of the Spring framework. So I am kind of taking the Spring MVC as a backbone or you can say background for discussing the Spring framework as well. Instead of starting from the Spring Framework and its core technologies from the scratch and later coming back to the Spring MVC, I thought of starting with the Spring MVC and then cover the topics of the Spring Framework through Spring MVC. So I hope this will make the videos more interesting. Let's quickly start with the overview of Spring MVC first. Now what we will do, we will start with examining the lifecycle of a typical web application request in Spring MVC. So let's go ahead and see this diagram. Now when an HTTP request is made from the browser, the first thing it hits is the Spring's dispatcher servlet here. Now it's like the front controller through which all the requests will go through. Now a front controller is a common web application component or a design pattern you can say where a single servlet or a filter accepts all the requests coming in and then delegates them to the other components of the application to perform the actual processing. So in Spring MVC this dispatcher servlet is acting as the front controller. Now the same logic is actually available in other Java based from frameworks like struts. I have already provided few tutorial videos on struts2 so feel free to learn struts2 from my videos which are available in YouTube. Now Spring's dispatcher servlet does more than just dispatching the request to our controller. It actually or you can say to other component. It actually also allows us to use the every other feature that Spring Framework provides. So using the dispatcher servlet we can use the core features of the Spring Framework like dependency injection. We will see those features in detail in some subsequent videos. So here we can say that like many other MVC frameworks, the Spring MVC is also designed around a central servlet that dispatches the request to the user defined controllers. These are the controllers which should be provided by us while this dispatcher servlet is provided by Spring itself. So we should provide our own controllers for each of our flow to process the request. So now we have understood that our front controller dispatcher servlet will delegate the request processing responsibility to other user defined controllers here. But in an application we may have many such controllers defined. In that case the dispatcher servlet would need some kind of help in deciding which controller to use for our particular request. For this the dispatcher servlet consults something called handler mapping module to find out where should the request be forwarded to I mean which controller the request should be forwarded to and that decision is mostly based on the URL of the request that is coming in so for each of our URL there will be a corresponding controller class which will process the request and we can guess that the handler mapping keeps a map of the URL to the controller classes and returns the appropriate controller class to the dispatcher servlet based on the URL of the request. So once the controller is chosen by the help of handler mapping then the dispatcher servlet forwards the request to that controller and the controller uses the payload in the request or the body in the request or the user information which the request contains to do some backend processing. Now generally what it does it delegates even this responsibility to some business objects or even business service. So the business objects would return some data from backend or it could be a database or it could call some business web service to get some data and this data is actually called as model and it is this data which is actually returned back to the dispatcher servlet. Now for showing the data to the browser the view technology is used we need some view technology to show the data to the browser. In our case we mostly would be using the GSP technology but Spring provides compatibility with many other such view technologies. We are free to use any of these. What our controller does it returns the model and the logical name of the view to the dispatcher servlet. 
Now the dispatcher servlet consults a different component called view resolver to map the logical name to a specific or physical file which could be JSP or some other view. So now our dispatcher servlet knows which view it should use to render the result. So it uses that view and hands over the model data which it got from the user defined controller to this view. After that the view will use that model data to render the final output and that will be carried back to the client. Ok so this was an overview of the life cycle of a request in Spring MVC framework. We actually didn't touch upon any concept on Spring Core but we will certainly cover those topics as we move along and whenever it is required. This is it for this video. Buckle up for some more learnings on the Spring MVC and Spring Framework related stuff in subsequent videos. I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching.